integrity, responsibility, diligence, and of course, sacrifice. Deliberately, spirituality is our first core value because that's what builds the fulcrum for the total man, a man of character, a woman of character. And that is exactly what is able to accommodate all other areas of human capacity development, stabilize all other areas, and indeed make it to be outstanding in whatever we do. And that is intended to change the thinking or mentality, and indeed the poise and By the way, ladies and gentlemen, today's lecture is a unique one, titled World Ranking Parameters, Matters Arising for African Universities. There, it, there's no better time or better day to have us discuss this than now, particularly now that universities have to begin to be forward-looking so as to be able to match international expectations and standards. Covenant University today is ranked number 36 among Millennium Universities by the Times Higher Education, THE, meaning we are gradually 
In fact, we are speedily gliding to the destined land. We are gliding speedily to the destination to become one of the best 10 universities in the world before 2023. God is helping us. I'm surprised you are looking. You are not putting your hands together to appreciate God Almighty for making this prophetic verdict a reality. And besides, the weather is not warm. It is cool in here. So I expect that there should be some excitement, show of enthusiasm, and indeed to get set for what is about happening. At the moment, we're expecting the Chancellor and members of the Board of Regents and the University team, management team, come in. Let us, at this point, be getting set as we give our loins to rise in honor of members of the leadership and management of this great citadel of learning. When the time comes for us to rise, I will let you know. But in the meantime, you have been put on notice. Can we all rise, please, and receive the Chancellor, members of the Board of Regents, and the management team of Covenant University. Let's turn our feet as they take their seats, proceed to the high table and take their seats. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, the University Band. Once again, welcome and good morning. Before we start, we will put the program in God's hands, and there is no other person to do that than the chaplain of Covenant University, Pastor Martins. Let's put hands together for the chaplain for the open prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for this 14th convocation lecture, for your good end of grace upon this university. Lord, we commit every part of this program into your hands, that you take preeminence and direct in every affairs of this program. And at the end, we shall have every reason to give you praise. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you very much, sir. Before we take our seats, we'll have the National and Covenant University Anthems in quick succession. National Anthem.
thank you very much. Put your hands together for the band set. Please let's have our seats. By way of establishing protocols, I recognize the Chancellor and Chairman, Board of Regents, Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepo, the Vice President, Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedepo, the first Vice President, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Bishop David Abioye, esteemed members of the Board of Regents present, and of course the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission Professor Abubakar Rashid. The Convocation Lecturer, Professor Peter Okebukola, former Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor AAA Atayoro. <laughs> Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Akan Bazi Williams. Acting Registrar, Dr. Larry Amodu. Other principal officers of the university, deans of colleges, and that of the School of Postgraduate Studies, members of the University Senate, members of faculty and staff, distinguished guests, graduating class of 2019, <laughs> members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. That is the protocol we shall be running with for the rest of the program. However, Introduction matters a lot at an august function like this. And to do that, I'll be inviting the Registrar of Covenant University, Dr. Larry Amadou. The Chancellor, sir. Please permit me to observe the existing protocols. I have the rare privilege of first of all introducing the members of the high table here present today. And seated to my extreme left, which is your right, is the Dean of Student Affairs of Covenant University, Professor Conrad Omoemi. Next to him is the Chaplain of Covenant University, Pastor Kayode Martins. Sitting next to him is the Director of Financial Services, Mr. Paul Waje. And we have next to him the Director, Center for Learning Resources, Dr. Promise Ilo. I have the rare privilege of introducing the Secretary of the Board of Regents of Covenant University, Pastor Chioma Okwain. Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged to have in our midst today the Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, who is none other than Professor Abubakar Rashid. You're welcome, sir. I am sure that you'll see our guest who is dressed in a robe, who I will not be in, uh, introducing at this point. So permit me to move to the other side of the table. It is my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the College of Science and Technology, Professor Kolawole Ajanaku. <laughs> Seated next to him is the Dean of College of Engineering, Professor David Omoli. <laughs> next is the Dean College of Business and Social Sciences, Professor Philip Alege. <laughs> we have next to him the Dean of College of Leadership Development Studies, Professor Chilua, Innocent Chilua. Next is the Dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Humphrey Adebayo. I introduce the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Akan Williams. It is my privilege to introduce the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor AAA Atayero. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together as I most respectfully recognize the Chancellor of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedeku. Thank you very much. I'd like to specially welcome all our special guests today, 
faculty and staff, and of course, the prestigious sets. We're excited today because we have a rare privilege, the peculiar set. We are most privileged to be part of a lecture today, which will go down in the annals of, of history, because we have none other than an erudite scholar and someone who is an icon in the education industry. But then, it is not in my position to introduce him. That will be done shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be listening to a sumptuous presentation, which not preempting the presenter today, is going to take us on a global journey, which will tell us best practices in the global world of education. And once again, it is not in my position to preempt what the lecture will be today. But to our dear students, I will advise that you please get your pens ready and your paper and be ready to jot down copiously from this life-changing and once-in-a-lifetime lecture. On this note, I'd like to welcome everyone to this presentation today, the lecture of Covenant University Convocation of the 14th, 14th Convocation of Covenant University. Please put your hands together again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Dr. Larry Amadou, Registrar Covenant University. Before we go to the next item, let me quickly take you on this course very briefly. A few years ago, a prophetic verdict went ahead on this very pulpit that this university would emerge as one of the top leading universities, not only in Nigeria, not only in Africa, but also in the world. A few years down the lane, Covenant University entered into the radar of the Times Higher Education, the global organization that does peer review, quality control, and evaluation and assessment of institutions around the world. By their latest ranking, we are now number 36 in the world, number 36 in the world, among Millennium Universities, the sixth best in Africa, the sixth best in Africa. I thought you were going to be clapping your hands continuously. Roll the hands, just keep rolling them. Sixth best in Africa, the best in West Africa, and indeed the best in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Isn't God faithful? But there is a man that is handed, that is given this particular uh, specific instruction to drive this mandate. And that is no other person than the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor E. 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 Atairo, who I am inviting at this point to come and give us a warm welcome. Professor Atairo, sir. I am not comfortable with the way you jam those hands. The Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepo. Let me stand on the protocols as established and a quick correction to the introduction. We all know in Covenant University, there's only one doer, and he is Master Jesus. Let's give him a round of applause. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this 14th Convocation Lecture of Covenant University. Convocation Lecture is one of the prominent milestones of the 21st century, initiated to steer discussions on topical national and global issues with a view to providing sustainable solutions. The title of this Convocation Lecture today, without preempting the lecturer, is World Ranking Parameters Matters Arising for African universities. I must deeply and very profusely appreciate the convocation lecture, a personal mentor, Professor Peter Okebukola, for accepting to deliver this lecture. I stand to be corrected. I think on the landscape of our education institutions in Nigeria today, we couldn't have found a better person to deliver a lecture on this topic. 
as chair of the Strategic Advisory Committee of the National Universities Commission, he is passionately involved in the strategic moves of the Commission to entrench global best practices in the Nigerian university system. The topic of today's lecture is hot, considering the number of universities we now have in Nigeria and Africa that are currently listed in the world university rankings. A very low number indeed. And we all know that we're in a very connected world and we cannot pretend to be immune to, be, to the rapid changes in the world and the demand for quality it imposes on educational systems in a fast evolving knowledge economy. Education in every respect is one of the necessary factors for development. As such, no country can achieve sustainable economic development without substantial investment in the human capital. Education raises people's productivity and creativity, promotes entrepreneurship and technological advances. As centers of knowledge creation, universities facilitate discoveries and innovations through published research outcomes, which becomes basis for formulating policies and impact on the socio-economic development of nations. Concerns in quality assurance processes in higher education have become increasingly common globally. This is based on the general realization that the well-educated workforce is critical for increased productivity and for maintaining competitive edge in the global economy. And the World University Ranking Metrics provide universities an avenue to benchmark and make continuous improvements in their processes and quality. At Covenant, our mission is to be a leading world-class university. To the glory of God, you just had the Master of Event reel out some of the accomplishments in the past academic session. This vision is fast becoming a reality. Within this very year, Covenant has featured in seven different times higher education world university rankings. And at Covenant, we are keen to initiate, steer, and participate in discussions that will reshape the world university ranking parameters to be all inclusive, and to this lecture is geared towards that aspiration. With these very few remarks, let me welcome you to this lecture. And as the registrar said, you may want to bring out your notebooks because it is going to be a lecture. It is on this note, Chancellor Sam, may I humbly invite this house to rise? Please do. As I invite the lecturer of the day, the lecturer of a 14th convocation lecture of Covenant University, Professor Peter Hokebukola, Chairman, Strategy Advisory Committee of NUC, and the Chairman, Board of Trustees, Crawford University. Professor Hokebukola, sir. Shall we be seated, sir? The Chancellor of this great university the Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, His Academic Eminence, Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, MNI, MFR, FNAL, who is the father. You are looking for father of the Nigerian University System. You find him here today the father of the Nigerian university system. Uh, Femi, this is not coming on. Yeah. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, dear graduating students, 
With gratitude to God, I'm honored to deliver the 2019 Convocation Lecture of the Great Covenant University, God's own university. My deep appreciation goes to the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Dr. David Oyedipo, the Vice Chancellor and Senate, for approving my officiating in the 2019 convocation ceremonies in this capacity. I'm thrilled with the title given to me by the authorities of the university, which is World Ranking Parameters, Matters Arising for African Universities. As you will see during the course of the lecture, when God says yes, anyone who says no is saying no for in pocket. God has blessed the vision of Covenant University as a world-class university that will be a pride of Africa, as well as take its place among the Ivy League universities on the global platform ranking. Covenant University, as I speak, and as you've heard, is West Africa's number one university. And by the last data I have, 151st in the world. If you want to ask me, how many universities are there in the world today? There are about 29, going to 30,000 universities. The 2019 and the 14 set of eagles, you are ready to flap your wings to be released tomorrow. You are poised to soar high and claim the world. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you shall ever be the head, not the tail. Uh, the person at the other end there, please don't advance this slide for me. I will do it myself. Thank you. You shall never be the head. You shall ever be the head, not the tail, wherever you go. I did hear you say amen. amen. You will continue to shine during your NYSC service year. Amen. You will shine and be the best of the pack during your postgraduate studies. You will shine in your workplaces and be among the best husbands and wives, parents and grandparents of wonderful children the world has ever known. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. I'm exceedingly honored to have his academic eminence, Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, MNI, MFR, FNAL, the Executive Secretary of the National Investors Commission, a special guest at this lecture. I'm aware that, you know, what I inquired from his office, I'm aware that this week is exceedingly tight for him. He has so many engagements all over the world. I think the only engagement he, he doesn't have when I check the schedule it's a meeting with Donald J. Trump. That's the only one he hasn't got. <laughs> so in spite of it, his academic eminence, Baba Rashid, still came here. So you are, you know, you are ranked number one. So you can see that God is letting people who, you know, the father of the Nigerian University System attend your convocation ceremony. This is no mean fit. It is clear that God has ordained this day. It is no human coincidence, but divine ordination, that this is the day that the lecture is being delivered on ranking. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, the, yeah, ju just leave this. Uh, no. It is a day when the Africa 
Regional Leadership of the Global University Network for Innovation, GUNI Africa, that was established by UNESCO 19 years ago, approved a day, today was approved that will announce the results of GUNI Africa's assessment and ranking of the NUC executive leadership since that commission was established. Now, the ranking team measured all executive heads of NUC since, since it was established in 1964 on 22 indicators. The ranking result was recently approved by the leadership of Guinea Africa. And I'm proud to announce that Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid was ranked number one and I joined the best executive secretary AUC has ever heard. <laughs> After a few years in office, he has earned the number one position. Just like Covenant University, after a few years of your existence in the Nigerian University space, beating several of the oldies before you, we are confident that Professor Rashid, Baba Rashid, as we fondly call him, will be the best head of regulatory agencies of universities in Africa in a few years. Just as Covenant University is leading Africa in several areas and poised to the lead Africa and the world in all areas by 2023. I've been mandated by the executive of uh, Guni Africa, as I said, it was established by UNESCO 19 years ago, to formally use this occasion to present the award certificate to Professor Abubakar Adamurashi. I'd like you to step forward, sir, to receive the certificate. I would like to read for you the narrative of the certificate and uh, the, some of the indicators, some of the indicators that were used by the assessors. Uh, Global University Network for Innovation Africa, Best Executive Secretary Award. This award is given to Professor Abubakar Adamu Rashid, MNI, MFR, FNAL for unmatched performance in the following indicators, among several others, since the establishment of the National Universities Commission. Quality of leadership, innovation, excuse me, innovativeness, efficiency, effectiveness, internationalization, revitalization agenda, Improvement in quality of teaching, improvement in quality of research, improvement in quality of community service, university private sector partnership, especially with the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, annual update on the state of university education in Nigeria, expansion of access through licensing of private universities and recognition of new public universities, Prudential management of financial resources, establishment of policy and ranking of open educational resources, sustained publication of latest statistics on university education in Nigeria, publication of AUC monograph series, curriculum review, Revision of all instruments for accreditation, including ODL. Improvement in the delivery of open and distance learning systems. Refinement of instruments for cross-border higher education. And partnership and sharing of good practices with regulatory agencies in North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Congratulations. Signed by Professor Juma Shabani, who uh, was the, is the Secretary of Guinea Africa, 
He was the, uh, the director of the Harare Cluster Office and the Bamako Cluster Office of UNESCO, July 18, 2019. the slides back at the end there. Uh, ranking No, 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 no. Uh, Femi, can you assist them there? Because they, 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 they're not uh, syncing with me on this. Ranking the subject of this lecture is all around us. In this auditorium, ranking finds a place as some persons are on the platform and others are on the main board, in the main board. Even on the platform, we are ranked as the chancellor takes preeminence over us all. As we enter the auditorium, Oh, sorry, the technical people, this is not advancing. Yeah, as we enter the auditorium, the ushers who have the orders to rank and seat us took us to places which befit our status based on some ranking criteria. The order of procession for this lecture, as we came in, is ranked. The graduation list tomorrow is also ranked as we have graduates classified as first, second upper, second lower, and third class. Seats in the airplane. Uh, no, look, I, I'm to advance this thing. Maybe, oh, uh, I have it here. Honest. Yeah, I'm controlling, but uh, moving it from there. No, but it's not moving. I can't, I can't see it move. I, I'm doing this now. Thank you, sir. Seats in the airplane are ranked as first, business, and economic classes, at least on typical airlines. Children in the family are ranked as first born to last born. The recently concluded FIFA Women's World Cup ranked teams as winners of gold, silver, and bronze. Anywhere you turn on earth, ranking shows its head. As it is on earth, so it is in heaven. The hosts of heaven are also ranked. The angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the great God of heaven and earth instituted ranking at the time of creation. On the sixth day, he created man, as, and as we have in Genesis, he created him above all creatures, but slightly lower than the angels. I read Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In this lecture, we shall take a brief look at the history of ranking of universities. Thereafter, we shall proceed to discuss a number of national, regional, and global university ranking schemes. And of course, from the title, our matters are rising therefrom. The heart of the matter in this lecture is how African, indeed, Nigerian universities 
can improve on their ranking on global league tables. And more importantly, how they should deploy ranking to contribute to improving their national relevance. I will conclude with some glimpses into the future of ranking of universities and the attainment of Africa's Agenda 2063, which I'm sure the convocation keynote speaker will address tomorrow. On a note of remembrance, and before proceeding, I wish to pay tribute to Professor Isaac Obanya, who was an outstanding scholar and university administrator who led this university and landmark university creditably as vice chancellor. May our soul continue to rest in perfect peace. Amen. I'm taking you on, on a very short trip, historical trip of ranking of universities worldwide. Down through the ages, the world of universities has been the world of ranking. While national ranking of universities, especially in the US, has had a fairly long history, dating back to 1983, global ranking of universities is a recent phenomenon. Hence, ranking of universities has a short recorded history, but a long existential history. While it was only as recent as 2000, that will have the phenomenon of ranking feature in the annals of universities worldwide. It was actually a feature of universities in the early, early uh, years of the last century. Having just returned from al University in Cairo, which was founded in its early form, in 970 AD, you can see it's uh, several hundred years ahead of Covenant University in terms of establishment. We learned of the comparison that of that university, al University, and I was there just kind of courtesy of uh, Barbara Sheik, of that university with other institutions 20 years later. Reference to such claims as al offered better training than so and so and so in the first century D was common narrative. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to I'll finish that brief history. And it's a short history. It started just like yesterday. 1983 in the US at the national level and then moved to the global level in the early 2000, actually by 2023. It did by 2001. UNESCO organized a group to start thinking about global ranking of universities. And I was, uh, I, I, I represented Africa, we about seven of us, I represented Africa on that elite team. And uh, after we then had uh, the Times Higher, uh, the Academy Ranking of All Universities, Web of Metrics all coming up. And then you have something also from Africa, which uh, you will see as the lecture uh, progresses. So I have three, uh, so we're going to take a case study of three global universities ranking schemes. There's one called the Academy Ranking of World Universities. We're going to follow up with the Times Higher Education and then the Ranking Web of universities, otherwise known as Webometrics Ranking. See, by July, this July, today, there are about 10 global ranking schemes of universities. Now, where we now rank the rankers, because there's a global observatory for ranking universities which I belong, if I participate in these three and others, we now rank the rankers. The number one is the academic ranking of world universities, and you will see why we rank it as number one. The other is the Times Higher Education, and the third is the Web of Metrics ranking. So I'll be looking at very briefly at the methodologies that they use, the results as I speak, and then the lessons that we can learn in Africa 
in Nigeria to ensure that we are up there uh, in the academic ranking of world universities. Now, all ranking schemes, all of them, the 10 that I mentioned, including these three, are rested on a set of indicators. An indicator is a criterion against which you can measure performance. For instance, for the possession list of this lecture, the ranking indicator is status in the university. This is measurable, and you can put some quantity on it. On a 10-point scale, for instance, the chancellor is 10, and, it's go, and it goes down the chain of command to perhaps 1. So when we are recessing after the lecture, try your mind's eye to see who, or which group scores 9, 8, 7, and so on. Three indicators or sets of indicators that are common to this big three, because they are different. And you will see in a minute why the differences in the indicators that they select now determine how universities are ranked. So academic ranking of universities has its own set of indicators. Times its own set. Webometrics its own set. But there are some commonalities which I want to draw your attention to. Now, the commonalities are in three areas, uh, the following areas. Research excellence, then internationalization, that means the international color of your star profile, student profile, and linkages. And then the third is the quality of graduates. Now, this implies that if a university A, if a university is A grade in research, if you are A grade in research, and you're able to attract a good mix of international students and staff, and your graduates are well recognized nationally, regionally, and globally, chances of zooming to the top of the league table are very high. So you already know the end point of this lecture. As matters are rising, how will you go up? So you can only go up if you are able to attain this. Now, let me take a dive into the technical world. And I'll be very brief because I have uh, uh, the text of the lecture, which uh, at some point you will get or you can download uh, from the website of this great university. As agreed, I will concentrate on the three. The academic ranking of world universities, ARWU, the Times Higher, and the Web Metrics. Let me begin with uh, the academic ranking of world universities. No, no, no. Uh, don't advance for me. The man there, just keep it. Uh, control. Yeah, just keep it there. Yeah. The academic ranking of world universities was first published June of 20, 2003, 2003, by the Center for World Class Universities, Graduate School of Education, and is updated annually. And. Uh, I go to the lab in China, in Shanghai, very far place. I will work with them. It will see how they collect their data, how they use their data, and how they do their ranking. Also for the other, other two. Now, the criteria for ranking, you can advance it one step. The criteria for ranking uh, as uh, I have on the screen, if you can read it, but I'll just give you the summary. ARWU looks at the quality of education that is given in a university. And how, do, how does it define it? It defines it as the alumni of your university. If any product of Covenant University now ends up earning a Nobel Prize or a field prize, a field medal, that's the equivalent of Nobel Prize in mathematics, then you are eligible to be enrolled into the ARWU ranking. So that is why many African universities can hardly find their way to that ranking. So it, it picks only about a thousand of universities worldwide. Now let's take a university. You will see the you will see the uh, the latest ranking uh, in a minute. Let's take Harvard. Harvard has over 
60 Nobel Prize winners, one university. Cambridge has over that. So every corner you turn in Harvard, you run into a Nobel Prize winner. Go through all the universities that we have in Nigeria today, you can't find a Nobel Prize winner. Go through all the universities we have in West Africa today, you can't have a Nobel Prize winner. Go through all the universities we have in Africa today, you have some in South Africa, you have some in Egypt. So if you see those universities feature, it's because of that. So you have a filtering criteria for a start, even before we start, start ARWU. You get person that graduated from university that has Nobel Prize, only well, Nobel Prize or not, if not, then you don't fit into the mode. So just, it's an elite group. That's why we ranked it as number one. Then the, uh, and I, I, I'm happy to tell you that of all the universities in Nigeria, I'm making a modification to the quality of education, that even if you don't have a graduate who ends up winning Nobel Prize, but if you partner with Nobel Prize people who now say that they are members of your staff, of your faculty, then you can get into that first filter. Covenant University, ladies and gentlemen, is the only university in Nigeria today that is able to get through that filter. And I'll tell you why. A couple of years ago, I found that Covenant University uh, 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 got a couple of Nobel Prize winners to come for uh, one of your major academic events. And I spoke with one of them. And he said, I'd be very delighted you know, to, to be uh, a, a faculty at large, a staff at large for Covenant University. So if that is sustained, surely you end up that there's no university that can afford, or they can afford it, but I think it's priority. Guni, that's the Global University Network for Innovation, every year we bring together 25 Nobel Prize winning scientists, uh, economists, literature, and all that, because we've got Professor Wole Shekha to come some uh, uh, 10 years ago or so. So we have what we call a Nobel Day to bring one Nobel Prize winner. I don't know how much it costs Covenant. But to bring one Nobel Prize winner to our meeting in Barcelona is an equivalent of, say, uh, let's say, 60 million naira to bring one, to just spend and enjoy with us for a day. So I'm not too sure, you the vessels that are here, I'm not too sure you want to put 60 million naira that you want to use to buy diesel to bring a Nobel Prize winner to your university. But Covenant University, I think uh, I've been able to, uh, I think on about three occasions, I've seen like three, three, three. Most like nine or so Nobel Prize winners have been here. The other is quality of faculty. The highly cited researchers in 21 broad subject categories and also papers published in Nature and Science. Nature and Science, as you are aware, are top, top in terms of uh, uh, impact factor and all that. The research output, papers that are indexed in science and digital index, per capita, and all of that, and get a total. So that is what ARWU is about. And they don't ask you whether you want to be ranked. I'll come to number two and then number three. That's uh, the uh, THE and the Webometrics. They don't ask you. We have the location where you get all this data. Can we go to the next slide? We have the location, yeah, that is the source of data. So for Nobel laureates, you can't just lie. You just go here, everything is there. For field medals, everything is there. Highly cited researchers will go to Clarivate. Uh, uh, Papers published in Nature and Science is the Web of Science. Authors Index, so they don't need to go nowhere. So when I visit Shanghai, I will sit down and will look at the thing. I mean, it's just quite, quite the algorithm is straightforward and quite uh, easy, quite automatic. So once a year, that is uh, published. So let's look at uh, the ranking for, yeah, that's the latest ranking for 2018, uh, the first to top 500. It started with top 500. Now it's now moved to the next 1,000. So that's where, they, where, where it stopped. So you have Harvard, you have Stanford, 
you have Cambridge, you have MIT. These 10 that I have there, none of them, Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, none of them has less than 35 Nobel Prize winners in their universities. One university, 35. I can see VC of Chris Lander. Yeah, VC Chris Lander, I salute you. I think you are going to employ a Nobel Prize winner there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something I'm going to mention as uh, towards the closing of this uh, very short lecture, because I have the thing all done here. I'm just going to gallop through uh, my presentation. You will see so many US, US universities. What has happened? And also in Times Higher, and in uh, webometrics, see U.S. universities. The thing being that, nationally, they run their own ranking. That is, I, I told you U.S. News uh, started it to, uh, in uh, 1983 and all that. So within the nation, they do their own internal ranking. So there is competition internally. So by the time the external competition now comes, it's not easy for them because they will have risen their profiles. It's like football. Take a country that has competition locally. You are not able to spot talents that you cannot pick. So if you have national league, national league, that can help you. So a country that hasn't got a scheme of ranking its universities, and we don't have that. That's one thing I'm going to be mentioning towards the end. In Africa, only Nigeria and Tunisia. So if you do not have some practice, some uh, ranking nationally, you may have some challenge in uh, moving up. Let me go on to Times Higher. Times Higher Education World Ranking of Universities. This, made its debut, this debuted in 2004. Today, it provides a ranking list of top universities globally, including more than 1,250 institutions across 86 countries. It is the only global university league table to judge research intensive universities across each of the core missions, as of teaching, research, international look, outlook, citations, industry income, and uses 13 carefully calibrated performance indicators to provide its bait. So what are we saying here? We're saying that another group, let's take uh, this group to be the ARWU, the Shanghai ranking. So this group has decided that yes, we're going to do, take research, we're going to take a look at quality of, uh, uh, quality of faculty, we're going to take a look at this and take a look at that, and then rank. This group, the Times Higher, say, oh, no. We're going to take yeah, research, yes, internationalization, yes. But we're going to take some other variables into consideration. And on the basis of that, they uh, come out with a rank. And only very recently, and I love that, they decided to steer their ranking towards sustainable development goals. Phil Batty, who is the editor, my good friend. Uh, we meet in a, in a number of these global ranking meetings. And uh, he said, they, they, they think that there's, there's times higher where Cof Covenant universities were ranked is the best because they are now relevant to a global development agenda. They are now seeing how universities in the world are responding to global development. And I believe that that is true. So if you see on the screen there, they are looking at their 17 SDGs this ranking, THE, is looking at the following, three, four, five, the missile seven. They are going to come, to come uh, uh, to that later. So for everyone, for every of the SDG, they rank universities. And they, 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 they then take the total. Uh, I provided for, yeah, keep, keep going uh, over there, the Young University ranking. You can see, uh, is that the Young University ranking? Okay. You have Covenant University has been announced, ranking so impressively well, nationally, regional, sub-regionally as West Africa, and regionally. And uh, I have all the uh, excerpts. As at yesterday, you know what happened? I, I wrote to uh, Phil Bati, and I said, look, give me uh, the ranking profile of uh, Covenant University, and tell me 
what the uh, uh, what Africa universities will need to do. And, and he wrote a mail to me, and you find it on one of the pages here. He wrote a mail, uh, which uh, let me see. Let, let me just read out uh, the mail. And he confirmed what we have said. I think it's towards the end. He confirmed what uh, registrar and everybody here said. He directed me to a link uh, and uh, asked that I. Yeah, I think I'll get to, I'll, I'll get to that. But the, the email which he sent to me on the 14th, just about just a couple of days ago, actually on Sunday, was when I got his reply. We move on to the third one. That's this group the Web of Electrics Ranking of Universities. Uh, this ranking, actually all of them, there are not many people there. Ranking is a very easy thing to do. All you need to have is correct data and set your algorithm, and the thing will automatically generate the ranking. This ARWU that I mentioned earlier, the Shanghai ranking, can you guess how many people are there? Just three. Three people ranking the whole thing, the whole world. The, uh, the, 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 the lab in Spain for webometrics, just, if you like, about three people too. There, there's a lab. But Isidro, the chair, the head of the place, the one that does you know, uh, this, and we, uh, we've been interacting with him, and incidentally, uh, I, if, you, if you Google my name and you say Webometrics Ranking, because I've been organizing training programs for Nigerian universities on ranking. And I put the, YouTube, uh, put, put the videos on YouTube. So I think about two years ago, I saw that Isidro is now forwarding my training scheme, my training videos to several countries all over the world. And I felt quite you know, happy uh, about that. So the Webometrics ranking is done every six months. The January edition of it, uh, if you can advance, yeah. OK, the January edition is what you have here, uh, showing Covenant University beating Amadou Bedo University, University of Lagos, Federal University. I thought we'd be clapping for our great university here, University of Illore, University of Port Harcourt, Federal University of Technology Akure, and several others beating them flat. Next one. Let's see the other slide. OK, this is about the President's rank, you know, uh, beating UNN, Rivers West, and all, of, and, and all of this. So we are doing excellently well. And uh, all glory must be to the Lord, for he is worthy of our praise. Oh, no man will give glory to himself. All glory must be to the Lord. So all we are saying here about Covenant University is not you. It's not a chancellor. But God takes all the glory. Let me now narrow to Africa. Some... Uh, Let's see, some 10 years ago, nine, uh, nine, 10 years ago, the African Union said, oh, this, uh, in course now, these white people, they are trickish. They are using parameters or indicators that will not let African universities be well ranked. And so they have to devise their own ranking. And I was invited as a consultant to, uh, uh, and I said, look, fine, if you want to do, nobody's holding you. Uh, and they said they don't want to call theirs ranking. They want to call it rating. <laughs> and I'll tell you now the difference between rating and ranking. Ranking is number one, number two, number three, number four, number last. The rating is clustering, like you say, Five-star hotels, four-star, three-star, one-star. I don't think there's any zero-star anyway. Fine. So that is rating. So you say a five-star hospital. You don't say this hospital is number one, number two, or number last. 
You just cluster them together. So they say that's what they want to do. So they developed an instrument. I did analysis, and uh, I we presented it. They said, fine, that's what you want. They don't want to rank anybody. They don't want, uh, they just want the instrument to be used, which is quite good for quality assurance. They call it AQRM, Africa, African Quality Rating Mechanism. That's what. Uh, for internal quality assurance. So I just, at any time, we just left, we were in Cairo. Uh, l last week, uh, and I said to all the vice chancellors uh, from Africa that we are just deceiving ourselves. Whether we like it or not, yeah, that's right. Whether we like it or not, we will be ranked. So you can be deceiving yourself and just say you don't want to be ranked. And the interesting thing is that when a university in Africa is well ranked, you find the vice chancellor making noise all over the world. Uh, MBA program is number one in Africa uh, this day and all of that. And when they are not well ranked, they will say, oh, these people are, they, these people are, they are, they are, they, they are fraudulent, they are cheating, they are cheating us. When you say university, you're talking about uni universal. So there's just no way any university, anywhere in the world can escape ranking. You can't. Webometrics will not ask you to say, do you want to be ranked? They have never asked any university. Because the parameters that are used are there. So by July, in a little while, the Spain, the uh, Isidro will come up with his ranking. I'll just show you there. So if a university uh, is number one, ah, they will quickly put it on their website and make noise. If you see during convocation, we will say we are number one. Uh, but during the following convocation, if you are not number one, you will say, you see, that ranking is a useless one, that, that kind of a thing. So we cannot escape ranking. It is something that uh, uh, we will have to uh, get to do. Let's talk about Nigeria. Let's take the Nigerian case study. Uh, yeah, go on next one. Next one. The Nigerian case study was the model for Africa uh, from 2001 to 2006. And what did Nigeria do? Uh, next one. Nigeria as a model, was asked, this is a UNESCO publication. It's called Rankings, and it's like the, like, like uh, if you like, the Bible of ranking in the world by UNESCO. There's another one, though, the International Encyclopedia of Ranking. Um, I, I'm, I, I've been, I, I'm uh, in recognition of what NUC has done, and what we have done in Africa, I, I have contributed the, the only chapter on that encyclopedia, on, uh, on, on okay, this is the one for uh, the UNESCO uh, UNESCO book, an African perspective on rankings in higher education. And anywhere I go, since this publication came out, I kept seeing the, my UNESCO people all over uh, and the other. What has happened? What has happened? Nigeria that they're saying is the uh, model, is the example. They are not seeing us, but I'm happy to let you know that Baba Rashid has started ranking open educational resources in the Nigerian university system. So what did we do? AUC indicators for ranking Nigerian universities. We had, uh, please go on, let's just quickly. Uh, we had the following indicators, 12 of them. And we gradually built on it. It was consensually developed. Research output, percentage of academic programs of the university with full accreditation status, compliance with carrying capacity, Proportion of the academic staff of the university at professorial level, go on. Foreign content of staff, that means proportion of foreign, foreign staff in your, in your collection of staff. Percentage of foreign students, proportion of staff of the university with outstanding academic achievements, internally generated revenue, uh, go on. Student completion rates, PhD graduate output for the year. Stability of university calendar, strength to PC ratio. You know, so we had this and we're publishing it. And uh, I'll quickly end by looking at matters arising from all of this. All of what? All of the global rankings, all of the African regional rankings, all of the national rankings. So what are these things? Now, uh, we conducted a survey of, of the perception of African scholars 
university managers and students on ranking. And it was quite uh, revealing. And uh, you will see, let's see now, currency of ranking, okay, fine. You will see the details uh, in, the, in, in the lecture. I, I actually went into some detail to report the findings. Now, let me, let, let me move towards the end by looking at the current state, current state, as I speak, of ranking. Uh, yeah, come up with that slide. Current state of ranking of you know, African universities. Uh, I have three uh, statements to make here. One is able to see a steady improvement since 2004. In 2004, we had less than eight African universities featured in a list of 500 universities in THE ranking. By July, this figure has risen to 15. Next one. Next one. Now, there's a stimulation of awareness of the ranking schemes uh, because of the desire to avoid the shame, the shame of low ranking. I need to produce better quality graduates to drive national economies and enhance the prestige of the universities. Next one. And uh, we are seeing improved investment by government and the private sector in university education in Nigeria. Look at the investment in Covenant University for everyone. You can see how heavy uh, 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 this is. You can see how beautiful your campus is. If you enter this campus in the night, you think you are the campus of Harvard University. Not be so. Very good. So I have in the private sector invest. And that is the impetus. That is the drive for Baba Rashid, the father of the Nigerian University system, in asking the private sector to also establish more private universities in our country. Uh, let's look at some of the uh, impediments. Let's look at some of the reasons why African universities are not well run. You know this based on all that I've said. There's no investment in research, no investment in research enterprise. Uh, we have data in this book, in this uh, lecture note to uh, research capacity deficits. That is, our researchers, young researchers, are not properly trained. I'm not saying absolute. I'm saying many of them are not properly trained to do quality research, front-end research. Research capacity deficit, also institutional. Our research labs are grossly incapacitated in terms of modern-day equipment. And we have inefficiencies, a lot of inefficiencies in the system. And we have sharp practices in research. I've often mentioned this. The level of plagiarism in the in either at the lecturer level at the student level is unacceptably high. Can you go on? Uh, and there's weak attraction of international staff and students. Uh, the he said, academic eminence, uh, Baba Rashid, is going to come out, in, I think, in another few days. The latest statistics for 2018, he has done the one for 2017, and the UNESCO Institute for Statistics and UNESCO are quite happy with him. They are saying that, oh, if you, they go to other countries in Africa, they don't get, maybe in South Africa, they don't get this kind of currency in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of data. So what you find in one of the tables about the proportion of international students in the university is, uh, is unacceptably, unacceptably low, and also of staff. The low ICT used to promote visibility and poor data collection and management capabilities. Can we go on? Now, uh, I've uh, prescribed seven ways for improving the global ranking of African universities. And I'll go very quickly through this. The details are contained in this uh, lecture note. We have to be familiar with the most recent ranking educators, and I've provided them here. So any university that wants to be well run, look at the indicators and see how they are measured so that you can work hard towards meeting, getting data to achieve that indicator. Like I said, the indicators are different too, from one ranking scheme to another. So if you want to be ranked on web metrics, look at those indicators, ARW and uh, all of that. Can we go back to this? Yes. And then we should encourage, I mentioned this earlier, national ranking of universities so as to prepare the local for the global. How would the national one work? It will work like this. 
we look at the global ranking schemes, like CD3, extract the core elements, and then use this as basis for ranking our local universities, if you like, our national universities, so that they now keep getting more prepared to enter the uh, global space. Improve investment in research and which will, which will strengthen institutional and human research capacities. Next, please. And then attracting international staff and students. They will talk about security, talk about all of that, but that is, we can find a way around that. Steering program delivery towards the SDGs. As you know, if anybody now wants to shine in the times higher, you have to steer your program delivery towards one or more of the SDGs that I've listed. So if you do that, Chances are very high that you will move up. The massive publicity, you need publicity, especially the social media, national, regional, and then you have to provide learner friendly uh, environment. There are seven, seven uh, that you have. Next one, just go on. I think that. Now, I have, uh, as I close, I have provided 40 strategies for improving ranking of Nigerian universities on global league tables. There are 40 strategies. So vice chancellors uh, that are here, talk to the vice chancellor of Covenant University and uh, get a copy of this. Maybe it was selling for about a million naira per copy uh, uh, free. Uh, because there are 40 important strategies that we have to look at. But there's one magic bullet, one magic bullet that we are hoping that if that bullet is released, the entire Nigeria university system will climb up and up and up. So what's that magic bullet? Go to the next slide. That magic bullet is this blueprint. The blueprint on the rapid revitalization of university education in Nigeria, 2019-2023. Ladies and gentlemen, by 2023, by Mubakar Rashid, if this agenda, this Rashid revolution, this Rashid agenda, by the way, uh, is fully implemented. That's the magic bullet. We will climb up and up and up. Do you want to? You, do, you, do you want to get a copy of this? I didn't hear you. Yeah, you want a copy of this? When the ES is uh, working out, you know, beg him, leave your address with him, and ask him. Oh, uh, let me recognize uh, the director, who is one of the best in the National Investments Commission. Malam Ibrahim Yakasi. Malam Yakasi, please, please, please stand up. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the best. He worked with me, and I can ascertain that. So don't touch Babara. She does like touching your father. Uh, touch uh, uh, Malam Yakasi, Ibrahim Yakasi. Give him your, your details, and he will send you that book. So if that is done, and please go on, I'm going to show you uh, the goals. Yeah. You can't see them, but if you get a book, you find these are the strategic goals. Ten strategic goals. If when, if when they are met, then we have the, 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 the places, uh, the top ranks uh, offer us uh, uh, to take. So the 40 keys, uh, these are strategies uh, for improving ranking of global universities have uh, listed here. Uh, and I've amplified. It's not just a question of just stating. I've also amplified them. How we can be better ranked in the three global ranking schemes, and how we can uh, better be more. Uh, 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 how we can be more responsive to the communities that we serve. Uh, yeah. Before I move on to the graduate students again, you know, at the start, the vice chancellor said. Uh, be making notes. And I'm reminded of Professor Osho, who taught me microbiology uh, at the University of Ibadan, that Covenant University is, yeah, has ranked better. You are ranked better than the University of Ibadan. So, uh, Professor Osho, when I was in UI, he will come to class, say the first lecture, and will just be taking notes as a VC asks you to do it. And when Professor Osho is leaving the class. He will say, my dear students, mind you, this is very, very, very important. So when it leaves, we just write, very important. Next lecture, Professor Shaw will come and uh, teach us 
about a particular fungus and all of that. And uh, when it's leaving, uh, students, mind you, this is very, very important. We write very, very important there. Then May, because we, we used to take our exams May, June. That was 1970. May, because we had several notes. Okay, and what we used to do is we pick the note for a course, let's say organic chemistry, and then we will look at the uh, we will look at the places where we are marked as very important. Yeah, okay, that's right. We look at places where we are marked as very very important, and then that's where we go to concentrate. But when we took that to a process, uh, Okay, let's start revising. So, very important. It's so, very important. It's so, very important. So everything is very, very important. So all the things I've said here, ladies and gentlemen, are very, very important too. And they are all contained in here. Let's go back to that uh, slide. Uh, the graduate students, I'd like to congratulate you all again. You have come to a great institution. And next slide, as I close, next slide. You will always be rammed number one. God bless you all. Thank you. Let us jump those hands even more. Let's rise in appreciation of our guest lecturer, the 14th Convocation lecturer, Professor Peter Okebukola. Thank you very much, sir. Now we know what it takes to be ranked number one. Now we know. Please, let's have our seats. Now we know. Um, that indeed we've got the capacity and all we need to do is to engage mobility and ensure that we have the right resources in place and of course the drive vision is at the very pedestal now at this point i would like to invite the vice chancellor to perform the next assignment let us receive professor atayoro May we rise, please, as I humbly invite the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents Covenant University to deliver his remarks. Chancellor, sir. I have no doubt that um, this ranking has gone beyond the university system. It has gone to cover our individual ranking in the race of life. We will always be ranked. On board the flight, you are ranked. In classrooms as individuals, you are ranked. In the workplace, you are ranked. You may come out of school the same time and someone is now a senior manager. The other one is just officer one. Ranking continues all through life. So we live in a very competitive world. And that consciousness helps to drive towards excellence in life. There is Nothing magical about excellence is simply one's commitment to continuous improvement. For that sumptuous lecture, which has fed us with life and light, and for our guest lecturer of today, who I'm not surprised he has done what he has done, let's give the Lord a round of applause. Ranking consciousness will help to keep us in motion towards improved performance in any area we're involved. J.F. Kennedy said something which I caught a few years ago. We live in an age of movement and change, both evolutionary and revolutionary, both good and evil. And in such an age, the university has an obligation to hold fast to the best of the past and move fast with the best of the future. Not everything in the past is bad. 
but let's identify the good, the best of the past, and let's commit ourselves to creating the future that we desire. I think all of the efforts that Africa and Nigeria is making is to see us experience a forward movement. Whether we like it or not, like the lecturer said, you don't have to ask them, come and rank me. Everything opens you and me to ranking, opens our university system to ranking. Now, it doesn't matter what we do in our region, <laughs> the world ranking parameters is there. It's there. Not a group of five star hotels and a group of, uh, no, there is no group in any industry. You can't promote, okay, we are all here, same year, now we are all general managers. No. <laughs> you are promoted to general manager on your own merit. On your own merit. I mean, and I think this is, uh, in my view, it's not about color, it's about accomplishment. Now, in the field of sports, whether you are black or yellow, for a long time, all marathon races are warm by our people in the, from East Africa, you know. Uh, they have developed capacity for trekking. They trek a lot, right? And so, when it comes to let's run long, a marathon race, they're already running it a long time. <laughs> so it's easier for that. You get there, whether you are black or yellow, short or tall, whosoever is first is first. I want to see our universities in Africa just climb our way to the top, not by just wishing. If wishes were horses, all the beggars will ride. We have to pay the price. There is no accomplishment without a cost attached. There is always a cost to every tower that anyone wants to build. Again, to our guest lecturer, thank you for opening us up to those issues and bringing them back to light so we can move forward all through our endeavors. Covenant University is still learning on getting there. And we remain committed to learning and putting the work, the things we learn, so we can get there faster than imagined. Again, thank you for that lecture and thank you all for listening. Thank you very much, sir, for those insightful submissions and incisive depositions. Thank you. Let's put our hands together once again for the Chancellor, Covenant University Chairman, Board of Regents, Dr. David Oedepo. Those hands are under construction. Now, let's sit down. Now, um, for those who will be needing copies of um, the lecture that was delivered a few moments ago, the digital copy will be available even before the close of the day digital copy will be available before the close of the day. So um, reach out to the uh, Covenant University Media and Corporate Affairs uh, in case you want to grab your own copy. And then some might have to be sent by email to those that indicate willingness to get the copies of the lecture. Now we have, on this great day, at this occasion, some very important persons that are here. Everybody is important. But we don't have all the time to acknowledge everyone. So we all should consider ourselves already acknowledged. However, we have some persons that we specially invited that are here. Um, first, I will start with the members of the Board of Regents that are here. We did introduce earlier, but by way of putting it in perspective, we will reintroduce Professor Awoyifa Joseph, a member of the Community Board of Regents. Please stand in recognition. Let's acknowledge his presence. We have a former registrar of Covenant University and indeed a former registrar of Landmark University. Before then, he had been Dean of Students of Covenant University. He's here live with us and we're happy to have you. A member of the Board of Regents, Pastor Dr. Rotimi Daniel. Welcome back home, sir. And then, of course, we have a senior advocate of Nigeria in our midst, a long standing member of the Board of Regents, Mr. Dele Adeshino. You are welcome, sir. We have our sister university, well represented, 
not only by some who had served as registrar or who had served in one capacity or the other before, coming, before going there and before coming back, but of course we have the set man of that university here, and that is our sister university's vice chancellor, our brother, Professor Adeni Olayonju, vice chancellor, Landmark University. We had heard of, in the course of the lecture and before that we have Christland University represented here. Christland is in Abeokuta, where I come from. Now, Christland University is at Idiaba, very close to FMC. But we have it right here inside Covenant University. Professor Chine Peace Babalola, Vice Chancellor, Christland University. You are welcome, ma'am. The acting university librarian of Covenant of um, Redeemers University is here. He is Dr. Akineyi Adeleke. Please, you are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And then we have Professor Adetun Omobode also here. You're welcome, ma'am. From University of Ibadan. Oh, member of Board of Regents. Apologies, ma. I thought I heard UI. Then, of course, we have the Director of National Universities Commission, a director from National Universities Commission. He's been mentioned earlier by our guest lecturer, Malam Yakasai Sanu Dezwa. Thank you. Now, we'll be having one or two persons giving goodwill messages. I have been advised that the following persons will give goodwill messages in succession. Because it is a ladies' world who will start with Professor Chine Dumpis Babarola, Vice Chancellor, Christland University, for two minutes of goodwill. And thereafter, we we'll have our own very dear Pastor Dr. Rotimi Daniel also give goodwill message. Let us put our hands together. You may want to use that mic. You You're welcome. Um, I am overwhelmed and short of words, but I pay deep recognition to our Father in God, Bishop Oyedepo, the Chancellor and Founder of this great university, Covenant University. I'm delighted to be here today, sir. God bless you. The Vice Chancellor is already my brother and friend. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, the ES, <laughs> thank you, sir. You're welcome. And uh, guest lecturer is also a father figure in this business. All the members here, they are our friends. We just visited Covenant University recently. And um, ladies and gentlemen, every one of us is distinguished. I really give glory to God for this day. I had planned to be here tomorrow with our gown and our goodwill, which is still here. Um, but when I saw the topic, I know that that's one thing we need in our own university. I want to congratulate immensely the visioner of Covenant University. Whenever I come here, what I see is vision that is being pursued. And I want to say today, I know it's a goodwill message, but I'm turning it to a bit of testimony. A few years ago, when I learned about Covenant University, I promised myself and God that my children will attend Covenant University. I didn't visit here. I only heard about it, the vision, the goals, the discipline. And I told my son, that's where you will go. And the first one graduated from here in 2011. He has never looked for a job. 
when, since he finished in 2011, he has never looked for a job. Fully employed till date. And the second one was to read medicine, no medicine in <laughs> Covenant University. So I went to UI, where I am from originally. And the third one is here. So I can beat my chest that Covenant University is really the best university in Nigeria, in Africa, anywhere. And today I'm privileged to stand before you. Immediately I was made a vice chancellor. I, the first place I came to was Chris, Covenant University to meet with the late Professor Obaya to say, I want to learn from you. And we were relating until she passed on. And I did not stop there. Just recently, we brought a team of our staff to meet with the team of Covenant University. That was just a few weeks ago to learn from Covenant University. For this year occasion, our Dean of Students is here full for the full days learning from Covenant University. And that's Dr. Dosumu, our Dean of Students. And we're starting medical program and we have a consultant, Professor Motade, who has decided to help us, a renowned pediatrician. He's here with me. I brought him along. And so together, Covenant University has become our parent, our father, our mother. And we are here to learn in your steps, to walk in your steps. And by the grace of God, we will learn fast and catch up with you and be with you in Jesus' name. On this occasion, I congratulate the eagles. Yes, because you are really eagles. And we know you will fly higher and higher and higher. We wish you the best. We wish you... What, what you cannot imagine, God will take you there because you have had a good foundation. And with respect to ranking, like our father, our fathers here have said, both Professor Okebukola and the Chancellor, we are always ranked. Anywhere they turn, they will see you, they will see Covenant University graduates being ranked number one. If it is rating they use, you will be five star. If it is ranking, you will be number one. And that's our prayer. And I pray for everyone here that you will continue to enjoy the blessings of God. We will drop our goodwill tomorrow officially. Thank you very much for this. Thank you so much, Professor Babala. Please let's put our hands together for that beautiful goodwill message that has been given. You're welcome. Ma. No, let's, it's okay. So at this juncture, I will be inviting someone that has been, a few moments ago, he's been uh, not only introduced, but indeed given an award. And we all were a cloud of witnesses to that. It is my privilege to invite, for a goodwill message, the present Executive Secretary, National Investors Commission, Professor Abubakar Rashid. No, please. <laughs> um, well, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, like my sister, the Vice Chancellor of Christland University, I feel humbled. I will just restrict myself to very few confessions, clarifications, and commendations, just very few. Because the goodwill message from the National Universities Commission will be conveyed tomorrow at the convocation. The few confessions I want to make really is that I have been to Covenant University a number of times uh, leading 
NUC accreditation teams um, on humanities. And um, I have always been impressed by this university. <laughs> but the confession really is that I had only been configuring, even though I see this great man on TV, but I've never seen him live and even shaken his hand live until today. Uh, the founder, the father, the chancellor, the chairman of the Board of Regents, uh, a very great Nigerian, a great citizen of the world, someone who is determined and who has demonstrated determination with clarity of vision, with commitment, because building this university and sustaining the reputation he has started building is not a small thing. Universities all over the world, the good ones, are run by reputations. And this university is building a reputation. And the reputation, the chief builder, the chief architect of this reputation is this great man here I have seen today. So this is one confession I really want to make. You see, when I was here some 12 or 13 years ago, I can't remember exactly, Professor Oyaizu O'Brien was then new as a vice chancellor here, and we came uh, for accreditation and I visited the library, and I came back to her to say, look, I was surprised there were not very many current books in this particular area. She said, how many days do you intend to spend here in this university? I said, well, two days or so. She said she will tell the chancellor, and these books will be around before I leave. And within 48 hours, books were ordered from the United States. I don't know how they got, I don't know whether angels, angels, <laughs> angels, convey, angels bring the books also. But those books, before I left, were there. And um, this confession, the other confession, is that um, I even got one free of charge, <laughs> which I used to train some of my PhD students. So I thank you very much for this. So I admire very deeply uh, Bishop Oedipo. I admire very deeply this university and the progress this university is making in Nigeria and in Africa. And then, of course, the little clarification really is about the lecture or what was said about me. My boss and my role model in the university system, Professor, distinguished Professor Peter Okibokola, you know, he came to NUC only 15 years before I went to where he was. And I hope to leave exactly 15 years after he has left. So I'm only 15 years behind him, but studying him and trying to emulate him. And my colleagues and I in the NUC have been modeling our work in the last three years over what Professor Peter Okibokola uh, did and has been doing. And that's why he has been heading the advisory committee that has been advising us in NUC. And he helped me to put up that committee. And Professor, late Professor Ayazo O'Brien, more because of her association uh, may, we, may her soul rest in peace. More because of our association with this university, we got her on the advisory board of just seven distinguished Nigerians who were advising the commission on the way forward for Nigerian university system under the distinguished chairmanship of distinguished professor Peter Okibokola. So we agreed in NUC management that if we succeed, the credit should not be ours. It should be Professor Okibokola and his team. 
where we don't succeed, the blame should be ours. And I will be the, the chief, uh, uh, the one to be chiefly blamed, not even my colleagues in NUC. So we'll continue to, so everything said about NUC, about me, everything, anything good goes back to that man, <laughs> Professor Otubokola. The commendations really, again, to come back, I don't like to be tautological, but I will have to commend the visitor, the chancellor, the visioner, the father and the founder of this university for doing what he's doing. And I'm happy he has already committed to giving me some minutes to talk because I want to come back next year to this university and I want this university to be even better, much better than it is today. And he has agreed. And he will do it. He will do it because he has always delivered on his promises. So we thank you very much. Finally, I congratulate anybody associated with this university, particularly the graduating students. I congratulate you. Honestly, you just need to know the rating. Wherever we talk in Abuja, in other places, when we talk of university education, when we talk of private universities, but for universities like Covenant, the whole idea of private universities would have been killed in Nigeria today. I have never seen an idea that has more enemies than the private universities. Yet, everybody knows the value. Everybody knows what this initiative represents. We are happy and we thank God. We are grateful to Almighty God for the blessings of this university through this man. And this university is the savior of the whole idea of private university initiative today. Because we see what the university does, we see what the products do, and whenever I stand up to speak to defend it in the National Assembly or in some interministerial meetings, I always make reference. I say, Covenant, have you been to Covenant University? Have you been there? Then people will say, well, uh, no, yes. I say, okay, just go to Covenant University. Then when you come back, we can talk. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, his academic eminence, Professor Abubakar Rashid, Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission. Let's put our hands together once again, please. And let's have our seat. Deputy Vice Chancellor, Covenant University, Professor Akan Williams, please vote of thanks. The Chancellor, I stand on the established protocol. Even as I move this vote of thanks, it is important that we return the glory to God the owner, the founder, and the runner of covenant. To God alone be all the glory. We like to appreciate the chancellor for heeding to the divine call to establish this university. And that is what our story has been, providing this platform that we now see. We like to appreciate his academic eminence. By the way, that name has been given by Professor Kebukola and it has ticked till now. <laughs> but in the joint university system, I was just discussing a few hours ago, and he says this is about the longest time he will be staying in any university in Nigeria for convocation ceremony. <laughs> and that to us is important. We like to appreciate you and the members from NUC. We like to appreciate the convocation lecturer for today. And for the records, it's not the first time he has come here for this purpose. I think, if I'm not mistaken, about the third time now 
being a convocational lecturer in Covenant. Sir, we appreciate you. We appreciate the members of our Board of Regents here present, the Vice Chancellor and the management team here present, members of Senate of Covenant. Oh, by the way, our Vice Chancellors from some other universities are here present. We say thank you. And for faculty, staff, and students of this university, for all the effort we've been putting together in the past several years now, it is only God that is a rewarder, and it is rewarding everyone in Jesus' name. For the peculiar set, how peculiar you have been, it is in your set that Covenant has been ranked as a world-class university. And uh, tomorrow you're going to be hearing another outstanding feat that has never happened in Covenant. That is also happening in your set. For the members of the praise, our men, the fourth eighth of the realm, we say thank you. For our well-wishers, our parents who are here gathered, everyone that is associated with this university, we can only hope that God that brought us shall yet take all of us back safely in Jesus' name. Thank you, one. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. Professor Akan Williams. So um, we have an announcement from the Convocation Planning Committee, and uh, the chairman, Dr. Tayo Shibajo, will come and give us the announcements. Please, let's listen for the instructions. Meanwhile, please, just before the announcements, um, for the copies of the lecture that was delivered, you will find it on our website. So you can just visit our website, www.covenantuniversity.edu.ng. Visit the website and look out for, just type Okebukola, it will pop up. Then you can download, it's free. Dr. Oshibajo, please. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sheriff. Shall we pay attention to the after this? event we shall be proceeding to clr for the cocktail uh, members members of senate board of regents and our invited guests you are all invited to be with us at clr the facility is just right opposite this building of this chapel then thereafter we have exhibition and uh, after the exhibition students are reminded that the holding events will take place at the college level and it is very, very compulsory for you to be there because you get your gown at that venue. Then on Friday, that is tomorrow, the procession begins at 7 a.m. Please endeavor to come on time. It's going to be a very long one, so you are expected to be here. And um, the program starts by 9, but procession starts by 7 a.m. On Saturday, we have returning of our gowns. Then thereafter, we have Chancellor's Special Assembly. You remember, you are supposed to be seated at least 15 minutes before the commencement of the event. And on Sunday, we'll be having our convocation tense given. And it starts by 7 a.m. So everyone is invited. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. At this juncture, I'd like to invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Atayiro, for the next assignment. Procession 8 in the morning. Okay. Procession starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Professor Atayiro, for the next assignment. Indeed, it has been a wonderful experience today, has it not? Will you please rise on your feet with me as I invite most humbly the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents of Covenant University for the closing benediction. Chancellor, sir. Shall we pray, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for a most successful session this morning. Thank you for a most enlightening lecture that we have just received. And thank you for all of the blessings of this segment of the program. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. As we bring this to a close, I pray that the blessing of today will go with each one of us. And those who have come from far and wide, I pray for safety on your way back. Um, as we look forward to the D day tomorrow, I pray that the joy of tomorrow will be for a long time to come in every family. In Jesus' precious name.
we shall still we'll be standing while um, members of the high table will take their procession and this is the exit point in the reverse order with the chancellor leading while the band can still go on with certain uh, renditions you can still roll please university band start rolling thank you start rolling thank you